How do you find uh, how do you find playing in the Magic Village? <laughs> I think that says it all, really. <laughs> No one, no band could ever sound like the Imagine Village because they don't have the Imagine Village's members. I think we're all able to put in our tenth to make, to compile a sound together. Particularly on this album, that's what's happened more than the other albums, I think. It was very tiring. I remember that. So it's prog folk funk, really, that we're looking at. Prog folk funk. Ripping it. Okay. Kelsey. Get Kelsey. Yes. Go on, Kelsey. Go, Kelsey. Okay, ready when you are. Go. Oh, bullet! <laughs> uh, the idea for buying a new album was to make as live an album as we could. <laughs> previous albums, in fact near enough every album I've made for the last 30 years of my life, you write the music, you record it, then you go out on the road and play it. Uh, in this case we did it the other way round. Tracks evolved on stage, we gigged them first and then we laid them down, so they came together in a very natural way. It was just a better way to construct the album and a better way to for the imagination to be represented more equally, I think. It's quite a departure in the sense that it's not, it's not kind of a reworkings of trad stuff. We are all, in our own way, writers and composers. So we wanted this album to be original compositions. And if we were going to do traditional stuff, we wanted to put those in a very contemporary context. I think it is important to write new material. I mean, you can't you, you you can't survive on old stuff alone. You have to be able to comment on your current situation, on your current cultural situation. Otherwise, you know, things stop. The idea that the past is somehow more valuable than than the future is is really disingenuous. I don't think it works. You know, there's nothing more dated than hearing kind of an electro backbeat with somebody playing something trad on top of it. And which, you know, was which was a little... Highlight tracks, I was, oh, it's just different highlights for so many different reasons. Like, washing song I adore because it's very, it feels very intimate to me and I love that. Hush a bye, my darling, hush a bye, my darling hands. Now I'll wash them feet, now I'll wash them. On the other hand, hearing the like, fisherman and the way that came together, and, and that it's, it's such a, a lot of music, but it's still a, a great song. Fisherman is um, my little song that I wrote about the Occupy protests. It's a, a song about an old fella that goes and uh, pitches a tent on the stones outside St Paul's Cathedral and um, has his little say. Old Mr Bent back from number 18 He pitched on the paving slabs like they were green And when Music Ted asked him just what did he mean Said I'm here to see a fisherman The brass on Fisherman was recorded, uh, it was kick horns uh, We were in um, South London near New Cross. It was Simon, wasn't it? It was insistent that we try out the baritone a lot more. Uh, and it brought out this beautiful kind of Mancini-ish kind of rasp. But they just wrote such, such beautiful, it was a real kind of goosebumps moment, the harmonics they put in the harmonies rather. The governor is an idea that I had of, I come, when I'm in my attic I look out and I've got a view over London and I just had this image of this idea of London as a very chaotic, dramatic and potentially nasty place and I just started putting these sounds and ideas together. The 
But what was really brilliant was once I presented that idea to everyone, everyone else seemed to get on the same idea and everyone's parts which came together seemed to add to it. There's a track called Sick Old Man, which was actually in many ways one of the more problematic ones to arrange and find, a, find an approach to, and I, that's just sounding so beautiful on the record. And for me at the moment, that's one of the standout tracks. They say I am a sick old man, see my sick old frame, smell my death as I pass by you. song that we put together up in Robin Hood's Bay in November. Uh, we were staying up there for about a week and uh, Eliza came up with the most profound, beautiful poem and presented it to me and I literally just improvised with her words and sang a melody. I was fascinated with lullabies, so I just decided that uh, this lullaby, this American lullaby called Pretty Little Horses, would fit really well with the song. There's a lot of contemporary issues on this album. When we wrote Winter Singing, it was, it was written at a time in the whole of Europe. We're in one of the worst European recessions, economic recessions we've had. Um, for decades and decades, and that was a kind of response to that, that we wanted to write something that was optimistic and carried across the spirit of optimism that can come out of hard times and people fight back. And I think the way we write together as a Sempi span is extraordinary, really. It's right, the, whole, the whole thing is different from anything I've ever, ever known. What's unique about it is you get this great reservoir of experience and I suppose for want of a, a better word of tradition, but yet it all seems to be focused and funneled towards something new. Going into areas where I'm slightly familiar and enormously sympathetic and then going somewhere else where I know nothing about it at all. I love it, I love the challenge, I, I do, and I, I love the dialogue and I love I love the fact that it has a reason to exist. Ultimately, it was very exciting. It wasn't daunting at all. A lot of bands have been together a long time. They get, tend to finish each other's sentences. And we're sentences. not... <laughs> but we're not in that stage. Now. Anymore. <laughs> because we can Our still stage. surprise each, at each other. Yeah.